at a young age of seven years old, um, I was sexually abused. And some of you might be, relate to that, um, but that having such a tragic thing, such a traumatic thing happen to you at such a young age, um, that really affects you negatively. Um, I grew up with anger and confusion, and I was lonely in what I had experienced. Uh, in elementary school, I switched from big schools to small schools, public schools to private schools because I had such bad grades and I needed more of a uh, personal assistance, more of a personal touch from my teachers. If I'm being honest with you, I didn't really feel like I belonged in either one of those schools. Come middle school and I started to develop and then some insecurities and I started to develop some awareness of like how depressed I was because you know, when I was so young I just had this traumatic experience I didn't really know how to think about it but come middle school I started to understand it a little more um, and so I started to understand that you know this is traumatic things happening in my head you know these are thoughts that I need to silence so I started uh, partying started smoking cigarettes getting introduced to um, a lot of things that could try to help me escape from the reality that I was experiencing because those things, you know, they, they kept negative thoughts and negative feelings in my brain, so I just wanted to feel normal. I just wanted to feel, I just wanted to forget those experiences. Um, come seventh grade, I got kicked out of school for just making so many bad decisions um, for, what, for, for whatever reason. Um, and getting kicked out of school, I was only there for a couple of years with all those new friends, it was pretty embarrassing. Um, I felt ashamed getting kicked out of school. So I kind of let that opportunity, I, I kind of let that experience be an eye opener for me because I didn't want to go back to public school and getting kicked out of school was, was pretty embarrassing. So I felt that I needed to make some changes in my life. Um, I felt that I would use this opportunity as an eye opener and start to get better. And so I convinced myself, my parents and that school that I, get, that I would get, get, her, get better and be better. So they let me back. Come freshman year of high school and things didn't, get better. Things were not um, looking on the, the brighter side for me. Um, I started hanging around bad people, bad associations. Again, just in search for something to make me feel happy. Because um, I was really, you know, depression was really starting to take its toll by the time I got to high school. Um, didn't really have a lot of friends and so I just needed something to make me feel normal. Um, got introduced to heavy partying, uh, alcohol, getting super drunk, um, and drugs. You see, what was happening was there was an emptiness inside of me. There was this, this void, this, this deep, empty chasm inside of me. And I, when I tried to fill this void with different substances like drugs or partying, different things that make me feel good, what ended up happening was they were just making this void inside of me deeper, bigger. The, the Monday after partying all weekend, I was worse off the Friday before the weekend. Um, so the solutions that I was trying to apply, they were temporary solutions. They weren't actually getting me where I needed to be. Um, There's a much deeper issue that was happening, and what was happening was I had lacked a purpose. So after experiencing that in early, early high school, I knew I needed to make some changes. Um, but I needed a much bigger eye-opener. I needed something that was more of a temporary solution to come. Summer of, summer of sophomore year, this was a year later after getting into high school, and I started to experience, uh, started to understand apathy, starting to feel apathetic for the world, a lack of care for things. Um, I was starting to lose hope. The light at the end of the tunnel of getting better and being better was starting to be diminished. It was, it was gone. Um, and one summer before sophomore year, I started to cut myself, cut my wrists. My goal there was just try to understand these pains and understand these emotions that were happening inside of me. I just didn't know what to make sense of it, so I, I tried to do that to try to understand it. Um, and if any of you can relate to that, or if you know someone, well, that doesn't really help you. So that summer of sophomore year, um, I tried to take a more permanent uh, solution um, for these things I was experiencing. <sighs> And one summer before, so one night, uh, one summer night that sophomore year, I reached into a medicine cabinet at my parents' house. And I filled my wrists with pills and threw them down my throat with the goal of trying to silence the noise and the chaos that I was experiencing for myself and experiencing and felt that I was adding to other people's lives, right? I felt that you know, I was becoming a burden to other people, my family, people were trying to help me. And if any of you know what that feels like, where you feel like your existence is a burden, that's a terrible, terrible feeling. Um, well, I believe by the grace of God, I survived. And, um, you know, I really didn't have anywhere else to go. And so I 
reach out to an old friend and just kind of share some things with him. And this old friend, through some experiences, um, introduced me to God. Now, I want to stop right there. I want to kind of, before I keep going and, and keep sharing, you know, as, as I get better, because obviously I'm here today, um, if any of you have ever experienced anything that I just said in the last five minutes that we've been sitting here, please find someone. Please find someone who you can trust and share things with and be vulnerable with, because it could literally sh uh, save your life. So I wanted to get better. I, 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 I wanted to be better. I developed a little bit of an elevated vision for myself, and I developed an elevated vision for the world around me. Um, there's a poet by the name of uh, Ralph Waldo Emerson, and there's a quote that I, I really appreciate of his. It goes, the purpose of life is not to be happy, but it is to be useful, to be compassionate, and, to know that you, and, and honorable, and to know that you have made some difference in the life that you have lived. That quote really stuck with me. It really kind of pushed me to think about different things because you, you, you got to realize when I was depressed, the questions I would ask were how can I make myself better? How can I make myself happy? But you can't really blame me because I was depressed and I was experiencing so many of these things. But when I flipped the script, when I changed the narrative and I started asking, well, how can I help someone else? How can I make someone smile? It made me feel more fulfilled and alive than any other party I'd ever been to. I had an opportunity to visit Haiti, a third world country, on a service trip. And I had this newly found passion or this purpose that I was beginning to understand in serving others validated. Um, um, no, no, knowing that you could make some difference, knowing that you could be useful in other people's lives, it changed my entire world. To know that someone else could walk away into their, norm, their normal lives because of something that I said or something that I might have did, it, it gave me a new direction. That's kind of where I found my purpose. Um, I kind of fell in love with this concept of serving others. It was therapeutic to me. It, of course, made other people better. It was mutually beneficial, made the world, you know, kept, kept the world moving. So I wanted to serve people for the rest of my life. I wanted to make a career out of it. Well, at the time, I had a mentor, um, a mentor that I'm very thankful for, um, and he was an entrepreneur. Well, at the time of being in high school, I had no idea what that word meant, nor even knew how to spell that word. Um, but when I analyzed his life, when I looked at him and his family, people often had amazing things to say about him. He, his family were often doing things for other people. So yes, they were rich monetarily from the money standpoint, but they were rich in life too. They were often doing things for other people. So he inspired me to research this word entrepreneurship. And through my research online, listening to podcasts, talking to people, I had found that entrepreneurship at its core is about serving others, creating conveniences in the marketplace, adding value to people's lives. So I wanted to try it out. I wanted to test this entrepreneurship thing and see if it feels for me. I was a skateboarder at that time and still am today, so I launched a company called Void Longboards. Um, we were a manufacturing company that focused on creating a safe space for young people to talk about life. Now, d during this time being, you know, this was sophomore year of high school, um, going into junior year, being in high school, I had lacked many skills. I, there's a lot, lot of gaps in what I had known, which is okay, by the way. It's, it's totally fine to start and not know things. Uh, but because of that, I spent a lot of time researching things, um, learning new skills, listening to podcasts, reading books. And there's a quote that I came across, um, a quote by a guy by the name of John Lubbock. He's a philanthropist from the 1700s, a few years ago. Um, and the quote goes, to do something, however small, to make others happier and better is the most elevating hope and the, the, the greatest ambition which can inspire a human being. And that's, that quote summarizes my introduction in entrepreneurship. You see, my first company failed. I actually lost $8,000, all of my own money. That really sucked. But through that experience, you know, no matter what, even though the business closed out a deficit, I was drawn to entrepreneurship because how much it impacted my life and how much I saw I was able to make an impact on others. You see, through that experience, I learned so many different things about myself and the world and what I was best at. Failure will not keep you from being successful. The fear of failure will. Learn to speak to those negative concerns and overcome them. So with this, you know, with, with this failed company, I was pretty upset, pretty discouraged, but with the help of a mentor and you know, good associations, I was able to move on and realize that this failure could just prepare me for the next thing. So I went to my mentor and I said, what's next? You know, what's the next thing for me? I want to still be serving other people. I want to feel fulfilled and I want, to, I want to feel that I have a purpose on this earth. And he said, double down on your strengths. 
focus on like the one thing you're best at. If there's one thing that you're good at with your company, Void, Void Longboards, do that one thing. And through this experience, um, I would read lots of articles or read lots of blogs about marketing and through marketing social media. And so I, I wanted to explore the depths of social media. I wanted to test what content uh, made people react so that I could maybe build an online brand. And with being a physical product company, it really intrigued me. Um, so with an eight month period of time, I had reached over 100 million organic impressions without spending any ads, just testing content, getting things to go viral. Um, I want to stop right here uh, before I keep going. While it was cool to have some campaigns go viral on social media, this screenshot is what one of my accounts for one of my months, uh, for, for one month for one, one of my accounts might look like, 10 million impressions. Um, but while it was cool to have like social media campaigns go, go well, and while it was cool to have a company and build these cool skateboards and longboards for people um, and feeling fulfilled, it was still pretty tough to be an entrepreneur in high school, to be young and be an entrepreneur. There, there weren't very many people that, I could, that were my age that I could relate to. Um, so I'm very thankful for the associations and the mentors and the tribe of people who I had around me to keep me motivated, keep me in, uh, encouraged through these times. Because failing a company and then bouncing right back is not a very easy thing to do. But again, with the help of other people, I mean, you, you can do so much more than, than you might be able to realize. So I started this social media marketing company, and my goal for this company was to leverage it as a platform, to of course make money, but to meet people, to learn new things, to develop, you know, to learn new perspectives, because those are the things that were really keeping me wired, keeping me motivated. Um, that later in life, I was featured on Forbes in a quote that they hired, uh, or the quote that they highlighted that I followed at that time and still follow to this day is, be a student of the world, not only a student of the classroom. And what that quote means is if you are a student of the world, that you recognize that every single person in this world can teach you something amazing. They can introduce you to a new concept or a new perspective. Every, the fact that you guys are here, I mean, there's so many people here that you can learn things from or be inspired by. And so if you think about the people who you meet on a daily, weekly, or monthly, or yearly basis, I mean, you'll be amazed by how much information you have. And I don't want to even talk about how you also have Google in your pocket. You know, there's just so much opportunity. Um, curiosity is, is a beautiful thing. That picture's really blurry. Um, around this time, you know, again, you're meeting people, starting new things. Those are the things that really kept me motivated, kept me excited. Um, this picture's a little blurry, unfortunately, but around this time, I launched a nonprofit with some friends called Project Reach. Project Reach uh, builds sports camps for individuals with special needs. In our local community, we, had, we recognized a gap, and we filled that gap with uh, Project Reach. This picture was the first camp of our first year ever, and now, four years later, um, I'm just an advisor, so I'm not really involved in implementation, but four years later, Project Reach um, has over 400 campers coming out each year, so I'm really excited about that. You see, through all this intentional living, um, I found a belonging on this earth. I found a belonging on this big ball of mud. Um, so it, you know, there's a quote by a, an author by the name of John Maxwell. He says, intentional living is about using your influence, going about every day, bringing about the positive change in the lives of others. And that was what I wanted to do. That was what I was experiencing, and that was what kept me motivated, so I kept going. I uh, graduated high school on May 20th in 2017. Barely, actually, I, when I walked across the stage to get my diploma, um, they, they didn't give me a piece of paper. They gave me a blank white piece of paper, and they, later I learned that they had to wait for a couple weeks after school to see if, for all the grades to come in to see if I had actually passed. I'm thankful I passed because I did not want to go back to, back to school. Um, through all the, these experiences, after traveling, I found my tribe of people. I found the people who genuinely wanted to see me be successful, who wanted to see me be better today than I, the, the, the day before. I, I, mentioned, I, taught, I touched on that earlier, but it's so important to find those people who genuinely want to see you successful, who want to keep you accountable in your own you know, temptations or your own angst. I went on a 6,200-mile road trip with some of my best friends around the United States, um, traveling, meeting people. Uh, this trip was also sponsored by one of my favorite companies in the world, uh, Subaru. It's pretty, pretty cool. Um, I started building an online platform. Through a lot of these experiences um, that, that I was able to get, I started to build an online platform. I wanted to share my story and a message and hopefully inspire and educate people. Um, I'm thankful to say I've been on over 40 plus print and online publications, Forbes, Entrepreneur, you see the list right there. Um, my first Forbes interview was the number one trending article on LinkedIn in, two, in December of 2017. 
I've had over hundreds of thousands of view, uh, views on my videos where I'm documenting my life, sharing my story, sharing things that I'm learning, um, sharing things I'm going through, or interviewing interesting people. Through all these experiences, um, I found my tribe. I found my, my, my people where I could build things with, where, where we could, when we got together, our ideas and our passions, they overlapped, and we could put goals together. Uh, just six months after graduating high school, I found a tech company um, with some friends of mine uh, called Snapshift. Um, I was a partner and director of mar marketing at the time. Um, now I'm just a partner. I've since moved on the company. Snapshift is a gig economy staffing platform for food and beverage operations. Very proud to say there's high user growth throughout the United States. If you're familiar with 500 startups, we're in batch 24. Um, and now Snapshift is headquartered in Silicon Valley, um, which is a couple of thousand miles away from where I live, which is why I'm not a part of the company. Um, Again, the picture's a little blurry, um, so I apologize for that. A year after uh, founding Snapshift, I started a nonprofit called the Start It Up Foundation with uh, Don Wetrick, a teacher of 21 years, and Hunter Stone. Our goal is to empower students outside of the classroom. We, we immerse students into an entrepreneur way of being, we inspire them to start something new, and then we mentor them through those uh, ventures. We envision a world where young people are freed of apathy, complacency, and purposelessness by embracing a personal responsibility, creativity, and the purpose of an entrepreneurial way of being. We have monthly events in five different cities in the US. We have online programming, a business incubator, seed funding where young students can get up to $10,000, zero risk, zero equity, um, you know, zero uh, in interest. And we also act as a media, uh, like, like a media agency for a lot of these young students, exposing them to media opportunities, getting them on podcasts, getting them featured on different things. Um, one of my favorite trips I've ever done, favorite most experiences, um, I'm a huge space NASA geek. I believe in aliens. We can talk about that after this. But uh, NASA invited me out to a NASA social influencer trip where I have to film content and create uh, videos around a SpaceX rocket launch. The one that I was a part of, that rocket right there, was a CRS-15 cargo mission. Um, it was just really cool. I got full access media credentials. got to be super inspired. Um, it was just really awesome. So what's next for me? Um, I was recently hired on as a marketing consultant for a $40 million restaurant company in the United States. My, my role with them will be helping them share their stories and their culture through videos. I have plans to expand my nonprofit, you know, the Startup Foundation, where we inspire and empower a lot of students. I have plans to expand that across the United States and continue impacting and empowering young students because that's what really keeps me motivated. Um, in the next one to two years, I'll be authoring my first book, which I'm super excited about. A few things that I would love to leave you guys with. I already showed you guys this quote once, but I'm gonna bring it back up. Be a student of the world, not only a student of the classroom. There's one time I was giving a talk in the States to university students, and I asked them all to stand, I opened up the talk asking all of them to stand up. I said, please exit the door if you don't plan to learn anything today or help someone next to you learn something. You see, intentional living is not only about bringing about influ a positive influence in the lives of others, but it's also about recognizing the opportunities that you have all around you. Being here at Unleashed, there are so many people, all these amazing speakers, all these amazing people, you know, all of you guys standing out here, there's so many things you can learn and be inspired by that are just under your nose. You know, Google, in your pocket, I mean, there's an infinite wealth of knowledge and information that you can uh, have access on there. Number two, start while you're young. Um, you know, 10 years from now, when you might, might be married or have kids, it might be more difficult to see a failure as a learning opportunity because it might set you back more than you might, might actually think. Number three, it's okay to be different. Embrace your alien is what I like to say. Um, kind of plays with the whole space theme. Um, I embrace my alien by, by, by getting a tattoo of it. Um, I have a couple tattoos now, but I, that's kind of how I embrace my alien, my, my uniqueness, the, the, my differentiator in this world. However you embrace your alien, do so. What, what makes you special is going to make you the most amazing employee, CEO, CFO, CTO, or whatever you aspire to be. You're going to be amazing if you can apply your unique perspective and your unique skill set with it. The last thing I, want, I would love to leave you guys with, um, what do you guys want to be known for? And what, I'm, what I mean by that is your legacy. I don't want to get like too morbid. I'm, I know I shared some dark things earlier, but I don't want to get too morbid, but if you were to die, how many people come to your funeral? And then 15 years after you die, how many people will remember you? Thank you. Oh, oh yes. Yes, sorry about that. Uh, I, we've got some questions. <laughs> okay, cool. Um, 
which changes do you think the education system should accomplish in order to really prepare people, young people for the world? It's a great question. And the answer is like this. But to give you a short answer, the school system is extremely important. There are, there are a ton of jobs out there that they require. You, go, you follow this system, you get a degree, you get this level of education, and then you have a job. Like if one of you are going to be my doctors, I really hope you have a degree to be my doctor. But for a lot of jobs that might be coming in the future that are actually already now, um, a lot of those jobs require creative thinking for you to apply your unique pers perspective that the robot or artificial intelligence can't do because it's just code or actually if we really want to get real, artificial intelligence can think creative as well. Um, but to, still to your point is the school system teaches complacency. It te doesn't teach you to think for yourself. It doesn't teach you to create new rules. It teaches you to follow a set of rules. So if the school system wanted to really start preparing students for the future and the coming world of automation and artificial intelligence and all these things, it will teach them to think like an entrepreneur. Not everyone needs to be an entrepreneur, but you can think like an entrepreneur. You can see problems in the world and you can you know, sp apply unique solutions to them. How do you manage to have a balance between your projects and your social life? That's an amazing question and something that I am still learning. Um, last year, uh, you know, I mentioned I was a partner and director of marketing of that tech company. Well, as they moved into 500 startups, a business accelerator, um, I started to notice that you know, if, you, if you view your life like a pie, you got your business, your personal, your, your relationships, or, or what have you, um, I was starting to realize my whole pie of life was me being on my laptop. It was me just working all the time. And while hustling is extremely important to achieve your goals, so it's extremely important, um, I still believe in life balance. I believe that I gotta spend time with family. I, I gotta be healthy and everything. And so um, the answer to your question is just keeping those things as priority. Like business and work and your goals are very important. They're some of the most amazing things you can have, but your health, if you can, you know, if you're gonna be able to walk a mile when you're 75, you know, like, you know, all those kind of things I think about um, how much time I'm spending with my family because I'm not necessarily promised time with them. So, yeah, I, you know, something that I do just to kind of keep balance is I just keep the important things like family, health, et cetera, as higher priorities above uh, business and different things I'm working on. Um, what advice would you give to your past self that, um, that you've learned after all your experience? You know, when I failed the company Void Longboards, um, it was really, really discouraging. But one thing that I realized is a lot of the successful people that I was studying, if I were to really dig into their life or ask them you know, ask real questions, almost all of them had their own Void Longboard failure. Almost every single one of them had their failed project. And what I realized is failures are often a precursor to success. So um, you know, if I was starting out, I'd just say take more risks and get more mentors. You can never go wrong with having more mentors and leveraging their experience and their advice. Thank you.